after two solid draws against Anish Giri and um, Duda, Pragnananda lost his third game at the Tata Steel Masters to Jordan Van Forest. In the fourth round, he was facing Grandelius Nils. Now, this was a great opportunity for Pragnananda as he had the white pieces and he began the game with 1d4. Nils played his favorite opening, which is the Grunfeld takes on d5, knight d5, e4, take on c3, bc3, bishop g7. Now here there are many many lines that are quite important and let's say you can start with knight f3, you can start with bishop c4, very popular, bishop e3, but Pragnananda chose queen a4, which is quickly becoming into one of the most important lines in the Grunfeld now. Knight d7 is the most popular move here and now he played his knight to f3 black castled and here prag played the very subtle move actually bishop e2 is the main move here there's also bishop g5 but prag went for queen a3 now this move is kind of prophylactic on many counts firstly in many lines knight b6 doesn't hit the queen secondly he's looking at the c5 square Anyway, Nil said, I'm playing c5. If you want to take on c5, be my guest. I will give you more material, but it will open up my bishop. It will give my knight a good square. So Prag said, I'm not interested. I'm going to play bishop e2. And here, black played the move b6. I would like you to now pause this video and think of something quite enterprising in this position it's white to play so what Prague did here was he pushed his pawn to h4 and i like this move it has only been played in one correspondence game before uh, there are certain other games where castles has been the main move but h4 makes so much sense i want to play h5 open up the h line and use my pieces to create some pressure against your king Nils could have gone bishop b7 when Prague might have been practically forced to push e5. But I think Nils got a little bit worried about this and he played his pawn to e5. It's a very typical idea to give black a passed pawn, uh, to give white a passed pawn with d5. But in this particular situation, it doesn't look very appetizing. After knight f6, he wanted to put pressure on e4, but Prague went bishop to g5, which was a nice move. And now his point is that if Prague can take, take and play c4, then eventually one of black's bishop, that is the g7, the dark squared bishop is going to be bad. Queen e8 was played and now Pragnananda took, bishop takes and he pushed his pawn to h5. Bishop g4 was played and now, you know, rather than releasing the pressure here when fg6 would open up the rook, what Prague did was first he played knight d2. He offered a trade of bishops and it is clear that if you take here, then after let's say bishop g5, I won't give you the knight. I can play knight f3, but then there is queen b5 or if I play c4, then after take uh, this position is interesting but white still keeps a small edge i was wondering if f5 gives black counterplay but actually it's not the case after edge g queen g6 rook h3 with the idea of rook g3 king h8 queen g3 even going into this end game white is clearly better so pragnananda here clearly understanding the dynamics of the position Nils went back with his bishop, but this allowed c4 and already white has a very pleasant position. Truth be told, where did black go wrong in the opening? Maybe e5 wasn't the best of ideas, but even after e5, knight f6, bishop g5, maybe black had to be very subtle here somehow. Uh, or, you know, he could play h6, takes queen f6 and try to play this way although in all lines it seems like white keeps a small edge so c4 queen e7 and now 
Prague played this nice move queen c3. Actually, some of the moves that Prague played from here are very difficult to explain, but the boy keeps control in the position like amazingly well. You know, you will not even find that Nils got a bit of counterplay. And this shows why Pragnananda is such a talented player, you know, and many play people, including Kramnik, have said that he's going to be like one of the best in the world. Bishop g7, queen e3. Now again, queen c3, the idea was maybe to keep some pressure here, but also to start a4, a5. But when he went back, he went queen e3. I think he wanted to stop queen g5 from being played f5 and now Prague took hg and a4 so he's not worried about fe4 of course because knight e4 and he's also not worried about black closing in the position with f4 bishop f6 a5 bishop g5 he played queen to h3 there are threats on h8 here so queen g7 he came back to c3 queen f6 and now bishop d3 now once the e4 pawn is protected the threat is knight f3 attacking g5 and e5 so nils played queen e7 knight f3 bishop f6 queen to c2 putting pressure here on f5 rook a c8 so right now you really can't take because e4 is just crushing first he played a b a b and short castles now this this move actually surprised everyone. In fact, here, rook a7 was possible. But what Prague realized is that after this, what has happened is the chances of a kingside attack are not very realistic because black has this very strong bishop which defends. In a defensive piece, it's very good. Otherwise, it's not great. But I have created a weakness on b6. Also, e5 is weak. So why should I, you know, take the risk of keeping my king in the center? Let me long castle, let me short castle and get my rook on e1, b1, rook a7, maybe the rook goes to b1, so many options. f4 was played, which was a very, very committal decision, but already, you know, f5 was in trouble. Uh, and now it's an important moment. Prague went rook a7 <coughs> and comes the decisive mistake of this game. Nils plays queen d6. We'll come to why this is a decisive mistake and why it is important to play something differently. Like for example, he could have played a move like queen h7, rook b1, g5, rook takes b6, g4. So you gave up a pawn, but in return, you get some counterplay. This position also should be very bad, like after knight g4, but at least you have some realistic attacking chances here. Maybe, you know, queen h5, I can try knight f6, just, just to give you an idea, rook f6, rook f6, oops, sorry, rook f6, and now bishop g4, trying to stop you from escaping here, threat is queen h2, queen h1. The other option was queen g7 here. Now, the point is very simple. What I want to do is I want to put my pieces down the h file and try to create some pressure. So, of course, here, maybe not queen, queen h8, bishop g4, maybe not play rook h7 because uh, then bishop d7 and bishop e6 check is over. But I can take here rook f7, king f7, knight g4 queen h4 with the rook coming here there is play you know this is exactly what nils should have tried the moment he played queen d6 black is lost but you have to make two accurate moves as white so try to pause the video and figure out what would you do here yes if you found either of these two moves bishop e2 or knight h2 well done this is the idea the main point is that black's only active idea is g5, g4. And so with bishop e2, bishop, uh, let's say if you go g5, knight h2, I have stopped it in its tracks and now I'll play bishop g4, exchange the good bishops and you are just totally lost. So bishop d8, knight h2, bishop c7, rook a1, king g7, bishop g4, 
he took it's a dream scenario a great knight versus a bad bishop rook f7 was played there was a chance to play f3 to keep things open but after queen c3 you know looking here let's say if you play fg2 king g2 it will turn out that this opening of the position will favor white more than black so nils tried to keep it closed f3 rook h8 queen b2 rook h5 rook b7 now he's doubling down the b uh, seventh rank king g8 king f2 rook h2 and here uh, 40 moves were played Prague thought for a good solid i guess 20 25 minutes and he played the more rook a1 uh, after which the attack is beaten off and here comes a very nice exchange sacrifice there are many ways to win here but i think this is the most uh, this is the most appropriate move and also the thing is that many times it's difficult to break through in such winning positions so prague's conversion is very nice if you played queen c7 there is knight e5 let's say you go rook g7 then i have rook a8 you go king h7 then there are many ways to win like d6 queen d6 and knight f7 very pretty threatening rook h8 mate attacking the queen and if you take your queen h8 mate so he took with the rook prague took queen e5 rook f7 and now queen e6 spinning the rook threatening to come in the d pawn is very strong rook g4 exchange sack back but then after queen g4 white is a pawn up and now pragnananda just you know calmly gets his king back to safety exchanges the queens and then again brings his king in here rook d1 check you can't take on c4 because of d6 and e5 e6 so you have to play king e5 rook here repeated couple of times and then king c3 he played g5 rook a3 check was possible but then white gets the a file so he played uh, g5 king b3 g4 d6 takes takes king e6 and d7 and it was time to take this pawn but the pawn endgame is utterly lost after king a4 king c6 e5 nils resigned because let's say after e5 if you were to play king d7 i go king b5 king e6 i take on b6 and pop a pawn and i win the game so with this pragnananda has won his first game in a super tournament that he has taken part in already a phenomenal achievement for the youngster just 16 years old and what is very nice to see is the fact that he is actually doing very well in the event you can see here he is on number ninth position ahead of anish dubov shankland karyakin and grandelius nils so kudos to pragnananda and hopefully he can continue this run this was a great game by him all the best